Hello, Omar. My name is Amy. May I examine you? Yes. On general examination, note if the patient looks unwell, breathless, cyanosed, frightened or distressed, or has any scars. Please, could I see your hands? Signs in the hands may include tobacco staining, peripheral cyanosis, splinter hemorrhages, Janeway lesions, Osler nodes and finger clubbing. Cardiovascular causes of clubbing include cyanotic congenital heart disease and bacterial endocarditis. Thank you. To examine the radial pulse, Place the pads of your three middle fingers over the right radial artery at the wrist. Assess the rate, rhythm and volume. Count the pulse over 30 seconds and multiply by two to obtain beats per minute. Do you have any pain in your shoulder? No. To detect a collapsing pulse, first check that the patient has no shoulder or arm pain or restriction on movement. Feel the pulse with the base of your fingers, then raise the patient's hand above their head. Palpate both radial pulses simultaneously, assessing any volume differences or delay. To measure the blood pressure, the patient should lie or sit and rest with the arm comfortably supported at about heart level and free of tight clothing. Position an appropriately sized cuff with the centre of the bladder over the brachial artery. Palpate the brachial pulse, which is medial to the biceps tendon, and inflate the cuff. The point at which the pulse becomes impalpable is a rough estimate of the systolic pressure. Inflate the cuff by a further 30 millimetres of mercury, then listen over the brachial artery with the stethoscope diaphragm. With the cuff inflated above systolic pressure, you should not hear anything. Slowly reduce the cuff pressure by 2 to 3 millimetres of mercury per second. Note the reading when you start to hear a regular tapping sound. This is the systolic pressure. Continue to deflate the cuff slowly. The point at which sounds are no longer heard is the diastolic pressure. More subtle features of the Korotkov sounds are described in the book. I'm just going to press gently on your neck. To feel the carotid pulse, lie the patient semi-recumbent. Only assess one side at a time. Gently place the tip of your thumb between the larynx and the anterior border of the sternocleidomastoid muscle. To look for the jugular venous pulsation, lie the patient supine at 45 degrees. Could I get you to turn your head very slightly to the left-hand side? Ensure the patient's head is resting comfortably to relax the neck muscles. Look across the neck from the right-hand side in good light. The JVP is the vertical height of the top of the pulsation above the sternal angle. Do you have any pain in your tummy? No. If uncertain, use the abdominojugular reflex or occlusion to identify the JVP. I'm just going to have a look in your eyes. Look for xanthelasma, corneal arcus and conjunctival pallor. Could you open your mouth for me and lift up your tongue? In the mouth, look for central cyanosis and dental caries. Thank you. Inspect the precordium with the patient sitting at 45 degrees and the shoulders horizontal. Look for surgical scars, visible pulsations and chest deformity. Lay your hand flat over the precordium to obtain a general impression of the cardiac impulse. Locate the apex beat by laying your fingers on the chest parallel to the rib spaces. It's normally in the fifth interspace at or medial to the midclavicular line. Note its character. Could you take a deep breath in, breathe out and hold? Feel for a right ventricular heave with the heel of your hand in the left parasternal area. Breathe normally. Feel for thrills with the flat of your fingers at the apex and both sides of the sternum. A thrill is a palpable vibration. 
If you subsequently hear a murmur on auscultation, go back and feel for a thrill in order to grade it. The stethoscope bell emphasises low-pitched sounds such as the normal heart sounds. The diaphragm is better for higher-pitched sounds. At each site, identify the first and second heart sounds. Assess their character and intensity. Note any splitting of the second heart sound. Feel the carotid pulse with your thumb to time any murmur. Concentrate in turn on systole and diastole. Listen for added sounds and then for murmurs. Soft diastolic murmurs are sometimes no more than a so-called absence of silence. Listen to the precordium systematically with the bell and then the diaphragm. Listen at the apex where you felt the apex beat. This is a good site to hear mitral murmurs. The lower left sternal border is the best place to hear the murmur of a VSD. The upper left sternal border is the best place to hear pulmonary valve murmurs and the upper right sternal border is a good place to hear the murmur of aortic stenosis. Please take a breath in and hold. Breathe normally. Listen over the carotids with the diaphragm. You may hear the radiation of an aortic stenosis murmur or carotid bruise. Listen in the left axilla with the diaphragm. The pan-systolic murmur of mitral regurgitation, often described as loud and blowing, can radiate here. Next, listen specifically for mitral stenosis with the bell at the apex. Please could you roll onto your left-hand side. This is accentuated in the left lateral position. It's a mid-diastolic rumbling sound which may follow an opening snap. Please could you sit forward for me? With the patient leaning forward, listen in held expiration. Take a deep breath in and out and hold. For the murmur of aortic regurgitation, best heard at the left sternal edge in the third or fourth intercostal space. Listen over both lung bases posteriorly with the bell for the crackles of pulmonary edema. And in and out. Examine for superficial edema over the sacrum, a common location when patients are bedbound. Use two fingers, press gently for a few seconds, and see if this leaves an indentation. Please lie yourself flat. Now examine the peripheral vascular system in the abdomen and legs. I'm just going to put you flat. Inspect the abdomen for visible pulsation or surgical scars. Palpate over the abdominal aorta. Remember, this is above the umbilicus. If the aorta is easily palpable, consider the possibility of an aneurysm. If in any doubt, arrange an ultrasound scan. A pulsatile mass below the umbilicus suggests an iliac aneurysm. Listen over the aorta for a brewy due to a stenosis. Also, listen for renal artery brewies bilaterally. Renal artery brewies cannot be distinguished from those in adjacent vessels, such as the mesenteric arteries. Inspect the legs and feet, considering ischemia and venous insufficiency. Look for colour change, loss of hair, surgical scars, and feel for temperature differences in the feet. Pay particular attention to the position, margin, depth and colour of any ulceration. Look specifically between the toes and heels for ischemic changes. Also take care to inspect the balls of the feet, the heels and their posterior aspects, which can be pressure areas in bed-bound patients. Palpate the lower limb pulses, beginning with the femoral pulses. Explain what you're going to do. The femoral pulse is felt below the inguinal ligament 
about midway between the anterior superior iliac spine and the pubic tubercle. Use the pads of your extended index and middle fingers. This pulse can be difficult to feel in obese patients. Remember that the common femoral artery is frequently used for vascular access during percutaneous interventions. Simultaneously palpate the right femoral and right radial pulses to check for radiofemoral delay, a sign of aortic coarctation. Use the stethoscope diaphragm to listen for femoral artery bruies. A bruy is a rushing sound made by turbulent flow due to narrowing or irregularity of the vessel lumen. Remember that if a vessel is completely occluded, there will not be a bruy. Next, assess the popliteal pulses. The patient must lie relaxed on a firm, comfortable surface. Flex the knee to 30 degrees. With your thumbs in front of the knee and fingers behind, press firmly in the fossa. The popliteal artery is sometimes difficult to feel. If it's very easy to feel, there may be an aneurysm. Feel the posterior tibial pulse two centimetres behind and two centimetres below the medial malleolus of the ankle. Palpate using the pads of your middle three fingers. Feel midway down the dorsum of the foot, just lateral to the tendon of extensor hallucis longus for the dorsalis pedis pulse. Use a Doppler probe to measure the ankle brachial pressure index. I'm going to lift your leg. To perform Berger's test, the patient should lie supine. Raise the patient's feet and support the legs at 45 degrees to the horizontal for two to three minutes. Look for pallor on elevation and emptying or guttering of the superficial veins. Can I get you to sit up and to swing your legs over the bed? Pallor on elevation, followed by spreading redness or reactive hyperemia on dependency is a positive result, implying significant peripheral arterial disease. Thank you.